it's important for her to see herself represented in media. I'm Luna, welcome to the Lunarium. Today we're going to be talking about borderline personality disorder, which the National Alliance on Mental Illness estimates that about 1.4% of the U.S. adult population experiences. For those who don't know, the psychiatric industry bases diagnoses off the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, Volume 5, often shortened to the DSM or DSM-5. The DSM-5 separates personality disorders into clusters, and borderline personality disorder is a part of cluster B. Cluster B? Uh, cluster of personality disorders. It's also called the erratic, dramatic, emotional cluster. An enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that differentiates itself markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. It manifests This guy's a sick dude. Okay, judgy. Look, the sad thing is, this kind of judgment against people with personality disorders is not at all uncommon, even among people working in the psychiatric industry. Cluster B includes borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and antisocial personality disorder. Today I'm talking about borderline personality disorder because I myself live with borderline personality disorder, which is often shortened to BPD. The thing is, though, that as a society, we have a problem of vilifying certain kinds of illness, particularly mental illness. I myself have been told by therapists and psychiatrists that they refuse to treat people living with BPD, and have even been told in emergency rooms that they don't even like to admit people who have BPD. When I was doing research for this video, I found this Google search result question based off most often asked questions that asks if people living with BPD can really love. And yes, we can. Also, fuck you. Okay, so we've established that borderline personality disorder is a part of cluster B, but what exactly is borderline personality disorder? According to the Mayo Clinic, Borderline personality disorder is a mental health disorder that impacts the way you think and feel about yourself and others, causing problems functioning in everyday life. It includes self-image issues, difficulty managing emotions and behavior, and a pattern of unstable relationships. This description might still be too vague, which is why we're going to use a character as an example. And the character that we're going to use, as I'm sure you can tell from the video's title, is Katra from DreamWorks She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. You have watched She-Ra, haven't you? If you haven't, stop watching this and go watch that instead. It's on Netflix and it is so good. S seriously. I'll wait. Okay, you back? Isn't it amazing? I am absolutely obsessed. There are so many things that I love about She-Ra, and one of them is the character of Katra. Katra really resonated with me from the very first episode, and it took me a while to realize that the reason was because her behavior is really representative of borderline personality disorder. Now, I'm not saying that Katra has BPD necessarily. I'm just saying that we can use her as an example of what living with BPD is really like. For those who need a reminder, she Ran the Princesses of Power was developed by Noelle Stevenson and is an adaptation of the 1980s show She-Ra, Princess of Power. We first meet Katra when the show's main protagonist, Adora, is training to be a horde soldier. Adora, how's it hanging? Katra and Adora have been raised to be horde soldiers since infancy and have developed an incredibly close bond partly due to lacking any real caregiver or family. The bond between Katra and Adora is strained, however, when Adora realizes that the horde is evil and that the princesses she has been raised to despise are actually trying to save the planet of Etheria. Come with me. You don't have to go back there. We can fix this. Are you kidding? You've known these people for what, a, a couple of hours? And now you're gonna throw everything away for them? Oh, what happened to you? I don't know, but I have to do something. I'm sorry, Katra. Ah! 
For Adora, all she's doing is standing up for what's right and defending innocent civilians. But Catra views Adora leaving the Horde as Adora is leaving her. Even though Adora tries to get Catra to come with her, all Catra can see is that Adora is abandoning her. Why? Why are you doing this? Because you left me! And if I don't bring you back, Shadow Weaver's gonna have my head! So enough with your weird little identity crisis and let's go home already! Or do I need to zap you again? In order for a person to be diagnosed with BPD, they need to exhibit at least five of nine symptoms, one of which is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. This is one of the hallmarks of BPD, and for me at least, is one of the most distressing of symptoms. Almost anything can be viewed as an abandonment, even just momentary rejection or lack of attention. This fear of imagined abandonment is on display in Catra's memories of herself as a child. What are you doing? <sighs> well, you're missing dinner. And I am too. Just go! Eat with your new best friend, Lonnie! Is that why you hit her? I know you like her better than me! You're supposed to be my friend. Adora doing something as benign as talking and laughing with someone else causes Katra to feel that Adora is abandoning her. And for Katra, being abandoned is absolutely unbearable. One of the reasons why abandonment is often so distressing for people living with BPD is what the DSM refers to as identity disturbance, or markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. Basically, many people living with BPD have no clear sense of who they are, and relationships and external stimuli take the place of a sense of identity. Losing a relationship is so distressing because it means losing your sense of self, and by extension, your anchor to reality. Catra displays a similarly unstable self-image throughout the series. For example, when Hordak sends Catra to the Crimson Waste as punishment for losing Shadow Weaver, Catra hates herself and hates the Crimson Waste. Ooh, ah, now, what are we looking at? I'm looking at the Crimson Waste, the place Hordak sent me to die. I have no idea what you're doing, as the last thing I told you was to leave me alone. I know. It was so noble of you. You pushed me away in order to save me, and it just brought us closer together. <laughs> I'm not... You know what? Doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Yet, later that same day, Catra feels strong and powerful, and even likes the Crimson Waste. You know, I'm starting to think this place gets a bad rap. Oh, I'm with you. It's nice and toasty. If you look for the ground ripples, you can avoid the quicksand. And my exoskeleton is loving this dry climate. And you can take whatever you want. The meaner you are, the more they listen to you. Give me your dark gun. Oh, uh, yeah. Go. See? <laughs> Catra's rapid shifts between hopelessness and overconfidence are part of a larger pattern where her opinions shift rapidly and dramatically. Adora is her best friend, then her archenemy. Entrapta is a useful ally, then a traitor who deserves to be banished to Beast Island. Shadow Weaver is a bitter old woman standing in her way, then a mother figure in need of protection. Basically, everyone is either with Catra or against Catra. The world is out to get her. I never stood a chance. I did everything right. I thought I could prove myself, but it doesn't matter what I do. I don't get to win. Or she's invincible. Now, who's the strongest in the Crimson Waste? Catra, 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 Catra. And don't you forget it. This kind of black and white, all or nothing thinking is a behavior often exhibited by people living with BPD, which psychiatry calls splitting. According to Very Well Mind, splitting is considered a defense mechanism by which people with BPD can view people, events, or even themselves in all or nothing terms. Splitting allows them to readily discard things they have assigned as bad and to embrace things they consider good, even if those things are harmful or risky. Healthline states, 
Those with BPD often seek outside validation without considering their own emotions about themselves, others, objects, beliefs, and situations. This can make them more prone to splitting, as they attempt to shield themselves from the anxiety caused by potential abandonment, loss of trust, and betrayal. Basically, it's easier for Katra to write Adora off as bad for leaving her than to accept the painful reality that Adora believes leaving the Horde is necessary, even if that means being on different sides than Katra. Splitting is one of the reasons why one of the symptoms with BPD is a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. Of course, splitting is not the only reason why people living with BPD often have a history of tumultuous relationships. Another reason is yet another symptom of BPD, which is inappropriate, intense anger, or difficulty controlling anger. Throughout the series, Catra lashes out at everyone who's ever nice to her, from Adora. We were all just having fun. You didn't have to do it. Why'd you do it? <gasps> To Entrapta. This time I am going to win. I don't care what it takes. We are opening that portal now. No, I won't. I need to tell Hordak. He understand. <laughs> to Scorpia, the sweet teddy bear who just wants to be her best friend. I'm here and there's nothing the two of us can't fix because that's what friends are for. I'm sure Hordak will understand. Oh, and if Entrapta were here, maybe we could- Stop it! Stop badgering me. Stop hovering around me. Just back off. I don't need to explain myself to you. We are not friends. When you think about the fact that one of the symptoms of BPD is fear of abandonment, it really doesn't make sense that people living with BPD would lash out at their friends and push others away. But often people living with BPD feel everything really intensely. Every emotion is completely overwhelming, and often negative emotions are completely unbearable. Basically, most people living without mental illness experience their life in a general emotional status quo. Environmental factors may cause their emotional state to rise or fall, but typically they're going to exist, you know, generally they're okay. But many people living with BPD have a typical emotional state that's often much lower than the general population. After all, another of the symptoms of BPD is chronic feelings of emptiness. Ugh, whatever. It's not like I even care. I just want to get out of this dump at some point before I die of boredom. In addition to having a baseline emotional state that's generally low, many people living with BPD tend to live their lives because of their tendency to feel everything so strongly, cycling through intoxicating happiness and overwhelming despair and rage. The DSM calls this effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood, such as intense episodic dysphoria, irritability, or anxiety, usually lasting a few hours and only rarely more than a few days. In other words, people living with BPD often feel anger so intensely that the only thing that they know what to do with it is to lash out at others. These intense, often misdirected bursts of anger can also be due to splitting, which Healthline says often occurs cyclically and very suddenly. A splitting episode can last for days, weeks, months, or even years before shifting. Almost every time that Catra lashes out at someone, it's because they've done something that she interprets as a rejection or betrayal. You broke the recordings? I, I didn't mean to. I asked you to do one thing, one simple thing, and you completely ruined it. But of course you ruined it. Yeah, you're Scorpia. That's just what you do. You couldn't handle Emily. You never know when to shut up. The only thing you've ever done is get in my way. What did I expect? I mean, how can you possibly be this useless? When Scorpia says that she broke the recordings, she has just undermined Catra's ability to succeed in the Horde. So in that moment, for Catra, everything about Scorpia becomes bad. But Catra's Scorpia-inspired splitting episode only lasts so long. Literally two episodes later, she feels positively again towards Scorpia, 
and expect Scorpia to just forget about any kind of disagreement. Hey, Scorpia, where are you? It's not like you to be late. Come on, I'm not still mad about before, are you? Stop being so sensitive. Get over it and talk to me, Scorpia. Scorpia? Scorpia? And now the thing that Kadra has worked so hard to avoid has happened. She's been abandoned. Scorpia leaving the Horde is so destabilizing for Katra because after Adora left, Scorpia became her favorite person. Favorite person is a term that was developed by the online borderline community to discuss the phenomenon that many people living with BPD tend to have one person who, as Medium puts it, they filter their worldview around. Often people living with BPD have one person that they're very emotionally dependent upon, someone who feels so important to them that they feel without this person, their life wouldn't be worth living. A favorite person, often shortened to FP, can be anyone. It could be a parent, a friend, a significant other, could even be an acquaintance. I really like how this one person put it on Nami's website. I feel like I wouldn't be able to function without that person. It's intense, but it's a part of living with BPD. I'm not crazy or obsessed. I just need a little bit of extra help sometimes. For Katra, at first her favorite person was Adora. Katra? <laughs> Katra, it's okay. It's just me. It doesn't matter what they do to us, you know? You look out for me, and I look out for you. Nothing really bad can happen as long as we have each other. You, you promise? promise? But then Adora left. So even though Catra tried to push Scorpia away, Scorpia became her favorite person. But despite Catra's attempts to avoid abandonment by dismissing anything that could hurt her as bad and pushing anyone that could hurt her away, Catra has been abandoned by Scorpia. Scorpia leaving causes Catra to destabilize so severely that she basically enters a dissociative state. What is the status in the woods? Our raiding parties have crushed the villages near our current outpost. Tomorrow we move farther inland. Everything is under control. Excellent. Etheria will be ours yet. <laughs> another of the nine diagnosable symptoms of BPD. The DSM refers to it as transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. I think you can see in the previous clip that while Katra's talking to Hordak, she's basically feeling connected from herself and possibly reality. As for paranoia... What are they saying? What? Who? Don't pretend like you don't know. Are they laughing at me? Mostly, people are just tired. I think if you let them sleep, everything will be fine. Everything isn't fine? Scorpio would be here if everything was fine. <laughs> just leave, like everybody else. I actually feel physical pain in my chest watching that clip. Poor Catra. All right, so about those nine diagnosable symptoms of BPD. We have intense fear of abandonment, check. Unstable self-image, check. Impulsivity in at least two areas that could be potentially self-damaging, such as reckless driving. I've always wanted to drive one of these things. Here, give me. Whoa there, save us enough fuel to get back. That is a problem for future Adora and Catra. I would say check. Basically, the only symptom of BPD that Catra doesn't exhibit throughout the series is recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, or threats, or self mutilating behavior. Although, I think you could argue that Catra's behavior throughout the first four seasons is a form of self mutilation particularly her continued attempts to push away the relationships that she needs to be healthy. 
You really care, don't you? Of course I care! You're Catra! You're our leader! You're... You're my friend. You're everything to me. <laughs> Caring about people is what got me into this mess. Get out of here, or they'll take you down with me. Not to mention her insistence on setting off the portal that will wipe everyone, including herself, out of existence. But why, you might be asking, is Catra like this? Which is really the broader question of what causes someone to develop borderline personality disorder. Well, like most mental illnesses, the exact cause of BPD is not known. It could be hereditary, it could be due to brain abnormalities. Many people living with BPD experience trauma or neglect early in their life. This was definitely true of Katra, who was raised from infancy to be an obedient soldier, not a person. The closest thing she had to a parent was her commanding officer, Shadow Weaver. Ah, uh, yes, how someone as unmotivated as you completed the course in that time, I'll never know. Always serving up those pep talks, huh, Shadow Weaver? Silence! Do not be flippant with me, cadet. Sorry, Shadow Weaver. Needless to say, Kadra did not get the love or attention that she needed early in life. In addition to neglect, Katra was at the very least emotionally abused by Shadow Weaver. You have never been anything more than a nuisance to me. I've kept you around this long because Adora was fond of you, but if you ever do anything to jeopardize her future, I will dispose of you myself. Do you understand? Some psychologists have come to believe that BPD is actually a set of behaviors and thought patterns learned in childhood or early adolescence as an attempt to protect oneself from sustained abuse or trauma. Many people with BPD suffered from disrupted attachment when they were still forming their love map, or their understanding of how relationships work. Many symptoms of BPD, such as splitting or having a favorite person, are subconscious efforts by the person with BPD to try to control their life when they feel that they have no control. Throughout the sustained abuse and neglect that Katra suffered, Adora was her only source of support and belonging. Adora became her favorite person, and Katra learned maladaptive coping skills to survive. Alright, I want to make it clear that while I am incredibly sympathetic to everything that Katra endured, it does not in any way excuse her behavior. BPD is legitimate illness, and no one can control having an illness. However, having BPD is no excuse for hurting the people around you. There are a lot of reasons why having BPD can make a person more likely to hurt themselves or others. Ultimately though, every person living with BPD needs to look in the mirror and recognize their own agency and accountability. For Katra, this occurs almost literally when she has an encounter at the end of season four with the shapeshifter Double Trouble. People have hurt you, haven't they? They didn't believe in you. They didn't trust you. Didn't need you. Left you. But did you ever stop to think? Maybe they're not the problem? It's you. You drive them away, Wildcat. This exchange is pretty harsh but it helps propel Katra to change her behavior. Well, that and being abducted by Horde Prime to a spaceship where all she can do is talk to Glimmer and reflect on her life. If Prime captures Adora, he can use the heart of Etheria to wipe out the whole universe! Is that what you want? Please, Katra, do one good thing in your life! Look. I have BPD, so obviously I don't want to offend anyone else living with borderline personality disorder. I do think, though, that many people living with BPD tend to be really destructive to the people around them. I myself was really toxic when I was younger, and I'm definitely not perfect now. I'll make a video about my own journey with BPD if anyone wants me to, but basically it took me recognizing that my behaviors were driving people away for me to decide to change. 
Which is not to say that you should pull a double trouble and tell someone in your life living with BPD that they're the problem. However, you also shouldn't be afraid to communicate that their behavior is unacceptable. As for Katra, after a dramatic series of events involving mind control, magic, and the lesbian Pieta, Katra is finally reunited with Adora. At first, it looks like Katra is going to go back to her old behaviors of splitting, lashing out at others, and pushing everyone away. Why are you acting like this? We saved your life! I told you not to come back! But you just love feeling like a hero, don't you? You'd rather I left you there to die? What do you care? I know you all hate me! I never hated you! <sighs> then you're even dumber than I thought. Just leave me alone. But then Katra chooses to be vulnerable and change the way that she interacts with others. Adora, wait! Please. Stay. There is no cure for BPD. There isn't even really medication that specifically treats BPD, only some of its symptoms. For a long time, the psychiatric industry basically wrote many people off living with BPD as either too difficult to treat or too likely to hurt themselves. This all changed in the 1990s when Marshall Lanahan developed dialectical behavioral therapy, which is a subset of cognitive behavioral therapy. DBT is one of the most often recommended forms of treatment for people living with BPD. I know, it's a lot of acronyms. I have some problems with DBT, and I don't think that any one thing can be all that someone needs to cope with living with a chronic illness like borderline personality disorder. That being said, DBT focuses on teaching people valuable skills such as interpersonal effectiveness, mindfulness, emotional regulation, and distress tolerance. Because ultimately, one of the most important steps to living a healthy life for someone living with BPD is to learn positive coping skills to overwrite those ingrained maladaptive coping skills. Are you, are you petting the thing that's been trying to kill us? Mm. I'm trying something here, if you didn't notice. It's just <laughs> so cute. It's not cute. <laughs> From her. No, don't. I'm sorry, I got angry. It's something I'm working on. Oh, you are? Katra chooses to work on herself. She recognizes that her learned defenses were actually harming her and preventing her from getting what she really needed, which was connection, community, love. <laughs> anyone who's watching this who knows someone living with BPD, please remember that your loved one is living with a chronic illness. Encourage them to seek help because help is out there. Hold up healthy boundaries and try to have empathy for what your loved one is going through. To anyone watching this who lives with BPD, there is hope. You're not alone and your life can get better. Katra healed and so can you. Adora? over. He's gone. Good riddance. <laughs> hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I also wanted to say a thank you to Noelle Stevenson and the entire cast and crew of She-Ra. It is so amazing to have a show that's bringing positive representation for different races, queerness, different body sizes, what it's like to live with a chronic disability, just so much. The show is so important for so many people, including me. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite part of She-Ra is, or just let me know what you thought about this video. 
I really love your feedback. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe all the YouTube things. I'm going to be posting a new video every Tuesday. Until then, take care of yourselves. Bye.